Come unto him. The message of that song is relevant to us throughout our lives as we learn to come to our Savior over and over and over again in every new circumstance of our lives. A few weeks ago, I flew to New York City to meet a new granddaughter. As my daughter and her husband met me at the door with their little three-day-old infant, there was an obvious radiance in that apartment. As they placed Hannah, who will be named after my mother, in my arms, she looked like a curled-up little doll with lots of dark hair. Within a few days, Hannah was stretching out her long legs and her long, thin feet, and I started to think of all of the things she will experience as she starts growing up. Perhaps she'll have some of the same fears that I had, like being afraid to be alone in the dark at age six or seven. At age 13 or 14, she may be sure, as I was, that there will never be boys as tall as she is. That concern was increased for me the following year when I became convinced that a person with feet as large as mine would surely never marry. <laughs> Those kinds of concerns are pretty normal, and the things that concern any of you would surely be concerns to me. But my greatest concern is that each one of you is growing in your spiritual understanding. I have a tremendous reverence for each one of you, my hope for you during these important years between the ages of 12 and 18 is that you are going from being a dependent child to becoming a righteous, problem-solving woman of faith. It's a mighty work you do during these years, and when you do your work well, you will build a foundation for a responsible and righteous life. When your leaders encourage you in the Young Women program, to get involved with personal progress, I hope you will understand that this represents much more than goal-setting and receiving recognition, although that is very important. The greatest goal is that you would constantly choose experiences that would exercise or strengthen your faith in our Savior Jesus Christ. There's a chapter in the Book of Alma, chapter 32, which seems to me to be written especially for young women. Alma teaches us how to exercise our faith and increase our belief in the words of our Heavenly Father. Would you go home and read this chapter? Draw a circle around every time it says the word. Then read the first verse in the book of John, where it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then in verse 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. In the book of John, the Word is referring to our Savior, Jesus Christ. The prophet Alma, in teaching us about faith, helps us understand how our faith in Jesus Christ can be strengthened. Alma compares the Word or our faith in the Savior, to a seed. In his words, Now, if ye will give place that a seed may be planted in your heart, behold, if it be a true seed or a good seed, if ye do not cast it out by your unbelief, that ye will resist the Spirit of the, the Lord, behold, it will begin to swell within your breasts. And when you feel these swelling motions, ye will begin to say within yourself, it must needs be that this is a good seed, or that the word is good, for it beginneth to enlarge my soul. Yea, it beginneth to enlighten my understanding. Yea, it beginneth to be delicious to me. Now behold, would not this increase your faith? I say unto you, Yea, nevertheless it hath not grown up to a perfect knowledge, Personal progress is like an experiment on the Word. There are experiences with prayer, scripture study, strengthening family relationships, and service to others. Exercising our faith will increase and strengthen it. As we have watched the accomplishments of Olympic athletes, it's surprising to me that some would suppose that our spiritual growth comes without effort. 
when our physical ability requires exercise and training. Now listen to the wonderful promise that is given to those who exercise their faith, who will continue to nourish the word. But if ye will nourish the word, yea, nourish the tree as it beginneth to grow, by your faith, with great diligence and with patience, looking forward to the fruit thereof, it shall take root. And behold, it shall be a tree springing up unto everlasting life. Growing up spiritually requires faith, great diligence, and patience. It takes maturity to look forward to those things that have eternal consequence. In infancy, little Hannah responds when hungry to food. She responds to gentle voices and dry diapers. It will be some time before she realizes that her mother is reading the scriptures to her while she feeds her. It will be many, many months before she knows why heads are bowed and prayers are spoken at the dinner table. Yet, her faith will begin to take root in this trusting environment. A little child can learn to respond to good feelings, but you are learning to take responsibility for your faith Listen to the words of three young women, as each had experiences that provided a chance to exercise her faith. When I was 15, I decided that I was going to learn how to drive, and my sister was going to help me. So we were driving home from my orthodontist in Salt Lake, and she pulled over in Highland and said that I could take the turn at the steering wheel. And I kind of had a feeling that it, it was wrong and I was scared, but I just thought, oh, you know, I'm just nervous. So I got in and buckled up, luckily, and we started down the road. And then um, she told me to turn off at one road, a certain road. And I, I was nervous and it was a steep road and I was just going too fast. And so when we, when we went to turn, and it, was, it wasn't power steering, so when I went to turn, I didn't turn the wheel far enough and my sister just started to kind of scream like, stop, and I just froze. And then we ran into like poles that go around a fire hydrant and it just smashed the whole front of the car in. And <laughs> um, it scared me really bad because my sister was just screaming and crying and stuff. And then once she gained control, then I found out that my lip was just split up and my, my knee was split, torn apart. And then um, we went to the hospital and got things taken care of. But after a while, I mean, it made me feel pretty bad. And I felt like everything was bad and that I just it was kind of worthless and stuff. But then I came to realize that Heavenly Father still loved me and that things would work out okay and that it was actually probably something that helped me learn and it has too because I've learned to listen to my parents more and that when you have a bad feeling not to do something that you should follow that feeling. When we moved here my dad had to come out um, before us because his job was ready and and then like we, our house wasn't selling and so we had to stay there and he was out here for seven months and he was living with different people out here and, and he, was all, he was getting real tired of it and so were we because it went on for so long and um, our family just didn't seem like a family because it was kind of split up, you know? And, we kept praying that our house would sell, and right from the beginning, my dad's company told us that they wouldn't buy our house, and so we didn't really think that that would happen, and no one seemed to be buying in California, and so um, my dad was like ready to come back, and and like my mom said, we had to pray real hard to be able to have my dad back again. And that night, my dad called us, and he told us that his company would buy our house. And 
that we'd be able to be together again, and it didn't seem like much now, but I didn't think my dad meant so much to me when he was gone, not having him around really to blood out of me. And now ever since then, I think I've had a closer relationship with my dad. When I was in high school, um, my friend's mom got really sick. And, well, everyone was praying for her and everything, and I thought, you know, well, everyone, someone's got to have enough faith at least to move a mountain. Or if someone doesn't have that much faith, then combined all the prayers would have, she got, she had to get better, you know. But she, she died, and I had a really hard time with that because, well, I thought that that's not how faith should work, you know? And um, so I talked to my friend a lot and she helped me realize that um, more than anything, faith is believing in Christ, that Christ and Heavenly Father would take care of you and that they know what's right for you. Each of these young women had a different kind of experience, but each chose to exercise and increase her faith. Sarah disregarded a feeling that what she was doing was wrong because of her eagerness to learn to drive. After a bad experience, faith gave her the motivation or the courage to evaluate her very frightening experience and make some changes. Did you notice at first that she felt unworthy and unloved because she had made an unwise choice. She said she felt kind of worthless. Those feelings are normal after making a mistake. But she wisely evaluated what had happened and why it had happened that way. She reminded herself of her Heavenly Father's love and what He would have wanted. She learned to listen to parents and acknowledge the feeling of warning. She recognized how she might use this understanding in another situation. This way, every experience can become a growth experience. Our Heavenly Father wants us to overcome bad experiences and not remain stuck in our feelings of being unworthy. The second young woman, Carly, experienced difficult family circumstances through a change in her father's employment and a move to another state. She learned the value of family relationships and being together. Through united faith and prayers, she experienced the blessing of feeling our Heavenly Father's love and support in bringing their family back together. Her faith was strengthened. In the third story, Paulette had a different experience when she learned to accept an outcome that was not what she had hoped for. She knew about the great power of faith, a power that could move mountains. But when her friend's mother died, she exercised her faith by trusting in Heavenly Father's plan for us. Growing up spiritually requires us to see beyond our own desires and to enlarge our way of seeing things. We not only have to let go of our selfishness, but sometimes let go of things we want very badly to come to understand our Heavenly Father's point of view. It is so important in this day that we each build an inner core of spirituality. As you exercise your faith and feel that spirituality grow, you will begin to feel more secure. You will feel more confident. Gradually, we will come to more fully understand what it means to completely trust in our Heavenly Father and stand as a witness of God. As we become righteous, problem-solving women of faith, we will learn to represent Him and do His work. Three years ago, I had another little granddaughter named after me, Emily Jeanette. On the day of her blessing, I felt a tremendous desire for her welfare and a hope that the good things in life would come to her. In that instant, I thought of what it means when each one of us takes upon ourselves the name of Jesus Christ through our baptismal covenants. I have thought of His great desire for our welfare. I feel the love He has 
for the young women of his church. I have also thought of his great love and appreciation to you leaders, those of you who teach doctrine, who model righteous behavior, who provide an environment of trust where others can practice righteous living. I have a testimony of our Savior's love for us. He understands our challenges. We were intended to have experiences that will help us know good from evil. Most of us make mistakes. We can't be perfect alone. The atoning gift of Jesus Christ allows us to let go of our weaknesses and be strengthened by His perfection. I bear my testimony of His atoning gift to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The next song, sung by the choir, reminds us that our faith shows in our behavior. Our Heavenly Father has asked us to share the truth and to teach others of His love. The choir will now sing Seeds of Truth. Following the choir, we will be privileged to hear from a man who has been called to be a special witness of Jesus Christ. Elder Dallin H. Oaks, a member of the Council of Twelve Apostles, will speak to us. Following Elder Oaks' message, we will all stand together and recite the Young Women theme. Please remain standing following the theme for the closing song by the choir and congregation, I Walk by Faith. The closing prayer will then be offered by Sister Sharon Larson, a member of the Young Women General Board from Farmington, Utah. <laughs> 